In 2009, 18-year-old world champion athlete Casta Semenya found herself at the center of one of the most intrusive media firestorms in sport. The way you are born is the way you are born. With that comes rumors, I heard one that you were born a man. Unbelievable. And it was at the dinner table my youngster said, he said, this is wrong, Dad. The next morning I said, right, this is wrong. If Casta believes she's female, she is female. There's no scientific test in the world that can turn that aside. A world champion suddenly suspended from competition. Her career lay in ruins. Oh, I don't give a shit about the genetics anymore, so yeah, yeah. So running or not running is the same story, so yeah, for me. Over the next few months, this shy teenager gave us unprecedented access during the most testing period of her life as she fought to run again. It reveals a human story behind the international tabloid headlines. August the 19th, 2009, was a pivotal day in the life of young athlete Casta Semenya. World Championship 800 meter final. This is a true world class field, and there's one very dominant athlete in the shape of Casta Semenya. According to coach, yeah, he just told me straight, that gold is yours. Just go and grab the gold, come back. But Semenya is away and gone. Looks behind, has got the gold medal sewn up in the bag. Caster was just 18 years old. She'd learned to run barefoot on dirt tracks in South Africa, yet now she found herself cheered to victory at one of the world's top stadiums. But even as she'd lined up at the start, events had already been set in motion that were to turn that night into a hollow victory. When we came on air about uh, three and a half hours or so ago, there was a story breaking that centered on Pastor Semenya from South Africa. The IWF isn't accusing her of doping or even cheating, but her progress this year has been extraordinary, and they want to know why. In this particular case, there were suspicions and rumors that, um, you know, there was some doubts really about her gender. Sports 24, a South African blog, had turned speculation to allegation claiming Casta Semenya was not fully female. On the day of her win, athletics governing body went public. The IAAF governing body of athletics said that they had asked the South African authorities to conduct a gender test on her to prove whether she was able or not to actually compete in these games as a woman. And there's no mandatory gender testing, but on, on suspicion, or if there's a challenge, maybe, um, of her gender, that the IWF has the right to ask discreetly for a test. The request was far from discreet. The new world champion was left to fend off intrusive allegations that called into question her very identity. I heard one that you born a man. What do you have to say about stuff like that? I have, one, I have no idea about that thing because I haven't heard that thing. Who said it? And I don't know. I don't give a damn about it. What makes a lady? Does it mean if you're wearing skirts and dresses, you are a lady? No. What kind of a lady is that? Yeah, I'm a lady. There's nothing I can say. Yes, I'm a lady. Yeah. I have those cards. It's being a lady. Though humiliated publicly, South Africa welcomed her home a heroine. Castor was allowed to keep her title, her medal, and the $60,000 prize money. But questions surrounding her gender remained. The IAAF requested Castor to refrain from any further competition until they had a definitive conclusion from sex verification tests. 
obviously we're working flat out quietly behind the scenes to resolve it. So fingers crossed now that we will be able to get there very quickly. And as soon as we do have information that we can conclude it, obviously I'll be saying that immediately. But until then, I, I, I can't speculate. It might take days, it might take weeks or months. I just don't know. Caster didn't know whether she would ever be able to compete again. Over the next few months, she allowed our cameras to follow her as she awaited her fate and struggled to deal with the controversy that was threatening to end her running career. Caster lives in Pretoria, but she regularly visits her family in South Africa's Limpopo province. Today, she's traveling home with her sister Olga and best friend Violet. The controversy has had little effect on her celebrity here. I was with Casta. Take care of Casta. Caster's mother Dorcas raised five children. Caster has three sisters and one brother. Everybody in my family is important. That's how things work. Yeah, sweet home. <laughs> yeah, Casta. Kanuka Ruya Kudumuna. Papa Lagushian. Never go on. Eh? Oh, and that is Salomon Yan or Mutu, Nudu Ramito. Kikamu Kwaba Pelaga on, and that fella you charas and old chair and a villain and took a mudir. Casta loved sport from a very young age. By the time she was four, she was playing football and dreaming of becoming a star. But by 12, she was living with her grandmother and had started running seriously. She soon began winning races and bringing home prize money. <laughs> Her talent was obvious, and local athletics coaches vied to train her. The first day I saw her, I could see a champion. She has self-confidence because she mixed freely with uh, the, the participants, whether men or women, you see. Then came the time when she was to run. It was marvelous. Caster trained hard on bush tracks around her village. Her grandmother had no doubt that she had a future as an athlete. She's the most important person here in my life because, you know, she was the head of this house. So when our parents are not around, she's the one who's taking care of us. So, yeah, she's my parent, actually. Maybe it was good for me, staying away from home. Who knows? Yeah. Because after I came here, good things happened. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. My career, especially in sports. Yeah. yeah. So you can sit down, Coco. We are not nervous. Yes, no win. We are proud with Casta. The surname of Semenya is on top. He'll be in the history of sports. Yo, 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 yo.
Little more than a year ago, Caster was one of these kids training in the bush. Those guys are the guys that I've been running with them the past two years then. Yeah, I joined them in 2007. We're coming from the, the same background. We've been running for schools, clubs, qualifying. We're the same sport. <laughs> but even in Limpopo, Casta cannot escape the media interest in her gender and her future. While Casta copes with life away from racing, her future lies in the hands of scientists and the IAAF, some 5,000 miles away in Monaco. The authorities are trying to establish whether she has a disorder of sexual development that gives her an unfair advantage on the track. Part of the testing involves measuring testosterone, the hormone known to provide a significant boost in performance. In a female grouping, there is advantage to exposure to testosterone, which is why people use testosterone as an anabolic steroid. And of course, then there are natural conditions where women normally have more testosterone in the circulation, and they would have a biological advantage in many sports arenas. But blood testosterone levels can be deceptive. In some women, high levels give no performance advantage because their bodies are unable to recognize the hormone. And defining gender, and therefore eligibility to race by using testosterone levels, is further misleading. We all have differences in our hormone levels, in our gender assessment of ourselves. We're all on a spectrum. And there's probably no such thing as a 100% male, 100% female. Well, sport is one of the issues where you have to be black and white. If you're going to set competitors against each other, then you need a set of rules to decide what's a fair competition, what is not a fair competition. With sex verification such a gray area, it's unsurprising that IAAF rules have yet to come to grips fully with its complexity. It also means that the results for athletes like Castor can take many months to come through. It's likely that we will never know exactly what Castor has. In indeed, I hope we don't. There inevitably, if you're in the public arena, there will be speculation. But I don't think there's really a need to go through a second guess as to which amongst a quite a long list of conditions she could have. The complications of natural human biology have left allegations hanging over Castor. The way you are born is the way you are born. It's nothing can change it. Yeah, I've got a deep voice, I know. So I might look tough, so what are you going to do? Do you think you can change it? No. If someone was born the way she was born or he was born, so are you going to go and blame him or are you going to blame God? Huh? Whose fault is that? Nobody. Caster's World Championship run now seems a long time ago, but her medal is being kept safe for her. Hello. You? Congratulations. Sir, how's it going? Good, good. You want to show Teddy Bear in your medal? Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's this? My baby. Are you proud of that? Yeah. <laughs> we send my name. Yeah. But even before her triumphant night at the Olympic Stadium in Berlin, things were not quite right. Three weeks earlier, South Africa's governing body for athletics, the ASA, had summoned Castor for what they claimed was a routine dope test. Athletics South Africa then informed us you must go for a random dope test at the specific clinic at the specific time in Pretoria. The IAAF had asked ASA to confirm that Castor is female. ASA's request for a dope test was a cover. She was to undergo sex verification tests. She obviously felt that she was violated. She was blatantly lied to because they took her there under false pretenses. While ASA waited on Castor's results, they named her in their team to compete in the World Championships in Berlin. They had not revealed to anyone that a test had taken place. 
Even the IAAF was kept in the dark. So on the eve of the 800 meter final, Castor was called for further sex verification. This time by the IAAF itself. Then also she told me that I've been for test again today. And that then was, you know, really, that was just for me then too much. Wilfred Daniels resigned in protest. The story leaked to the press. The IAAF took the unusual and unprecedented step of commenting publicly. It's seen as a medical condition. It's another point to stress. Um, it's not necessarily, well, clearly not her fault. It's who she is physically. Though the IAAF had the right to ask for a sex test, it also had a duty of care to Castor, one of confidentiality. This is you know, just natural to everybody in the medical profession that none of the medical details need ever be allowed out and should never be allowed out. The most important thing is respect. If you respect your, your parents or everybody, yeah. So actually you must respect each and every person. You have been seeing what was happening past the month. So you call that a respect. So I don't call it a respect. ASA sat at the center of the storm. Its president, Leonard Juene, denied they'd performed any tests or that there were any suspicions over Castor's gender. Following Berlin, his web of lies began to unravel. I felt that at that time I was acting in the best interest of Castor's mind as a person. I believed at that time that my consistent denial would help to protect. That's what I believed. I've however realized that it was an error of judgment. He and the entire ASA board were sacked by the country's Olympic committee. A young athlete who wanted only to run found herself in a political nightmare. No, I don't have rights. Well, let's put it this way. In athletics, I don't have rights. I'm just a competitor, so I didn't go there reading the rules and regulations on those things, kind of things. And I did that because I can run. It's now six months since the events in Berlin. Castor is back in training in Pretoria but her future is uncertain. She's still suspended from international competition, and it's unclear what is delaying a decision from the IAAF. First of all, is there a problem? Because let's face it, maybe there isn't in the end, and we're wrong, or well, somebody's wrong. So this is the point, we're not, that's why we say it's continuing, because we still don't know. Castor is on a scholarship studying sports science at Pretoria University. She's living free at the HPC, the High Performance Center, on campus. Its facilities attract the world's top sports stars. On top of university studies here, she's expected to maintain a strict training regime. But she's finding that hard with no upcoming race to train for. Oh, we'll train without her. She's gonna explain afternoon what happened because I can't find her. Coach takes the 5 a.m. training session without her. Shoot. At 8 a.m., she surfaces. It must be weird eating alone. No, not weird. So, actually, I'm not eating alone every day. So, breakfast, it's not a problem. But lunch and supper, you need some company. So, yeah. Did you like living at HPC? No, not really. If you're not with your family, you know, 
it's not good sometimes. No. If you are used to hang around with your sisters, brothers, or if you are far, far away from each other, you will miss them a lot. So, yeah. Caster makes it to afternoon training with her coach, known to the athletes as Sponge. All right. Zinte, no cast and a la lixin. Ah, ni le minexen pra sponge. Oh, no, 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 Sorry, start. Let our coach allow you start this again. Anil, please. Please. I need it very, very fast. Two fifty-seven. That one was hard. 301, 303. When you sit here, she's trying to recover, but it takes long because it was very hard. Caster's best friend, Violet, is a 1,500-meter runner, also from Limpopo. She's upset by the effect the controversy is having on Caster. I was crying, crying a lot, and Casta told me that, what, what are you crying for? And she saw my, my tears many times. I've never seen her cry, never. I was told myself that I'm, I will make sure that she's always happy and she mustn't give up and she must stay positive. There have been few moments of hope during Casta's period of suspension. But one came just three months after the World Championships in Berlin. A new chief, Ray Marley, had taken over after the sackings at ASA. Coach and caster believed this might be the opportunity to get back on the track, at least in South Africa. The athletes are the most important people, not administrators like myself or board members. I would like to see normality taking place. An ASA Athletics race meeting was coming up in the new year at Pilditch Stadium outside Pretoria. With Marley making the right noises, coach had decided to enter Caster in the 800 meters. The people who make things happen, it is those people who go out onto the track and onto the fields. And uh, we must make sure that they are protected at all costs from administrators like myself. Caster was soon to discover this didn't include her. So, which means in coach, but do you not agree grant? No, I don't understand. I can understand that that man is not going to be a big one. I'm going to discuss it next. So, why should that be so? 75 years is old. It's an old man who failed to think. The day of the race has arrived. Caster goes to Pilditch not in a triumphant return to racing, but to cheer Violet on from the stands. Caster will be here today, but uh, she's not going to run, not today. She won't run today. And and her presence soon attracts the attention of the local media. No running. No. So hopefully you'll be back before the end of the year. I don't know. <laughs> All dressed up and nowhere to go. Yeah. By tomorrow we tell you you can be back. No, actually, maybe for good. I'm all for good, maybe. I don't know. The 
last few months have affected Casta deeply. She's taken to her room and is refusing to see her friends. Sometimes we, she don't train and yeah, she's, she's not okay because she's not competing now. I'm in my office. Can't you try to take a walk? Just walk, maybe the headache will run away. Okay, bye. <laughs> she's there. But uh, she's hiding. She's a little bit confused. Violet is increasingly worried by Castor's text messages. It seems as if now she's, she wants to give up on her life. She can give up on athletics, it's fine, but education, she must study. She's still young. Eventually, Castor emerges. Sometimes in life, you cannot just be happy every day and whatever. Sometimes you just feel sad, just want to be alone. <laughs> Around the HPC campus, it's Castor's talent as a runner that attracts attention, not questions raised by her appearance. There are many people who, to every measure of femaleness, would score female, but look quite androgynous. So although that will often trigger the thought and trigger the process of investigation, in itself it, it is of very little value. If you don't look like Angelina Nijoli, you're not really a woman. And there's a large group of women who are fed up with men telling them what they should look like. And they interpret this as another male-dominated intervention, where Casta Semenya, a female, is being told what to do by men. Guys, come, come around. Casta has strong feelings about most things, including what her friends should wear. Short and you want us to talk about the mini skirts? when you were running in Berlin, what were you wearing? Look, I was wearing a tie and a crop top. Let me keep quiet. Gender is what you perceive yourself to be. And that's it. And you cannot scientifically define gender. So if Castor believes she is female, she is female. And you can't overturn that. There is no scientific test in the world that can turn that aside. While others argue about the specifics of Castor's gender, only one consideration is important to her career as a top athlete. Whether her rivals are at an unfair disadvantage in a race against her. She's not better than the best female that's ever run. She seconds off the world record in the 800 meters. So how can you say she's got an advantage? There's no measure of her advantage. If she ran 5% better than the fastest woman had ever run, then we can say, well, okay, this looks unusual. But her performances are exactly in women's performances. So, so where's the advantage? I don't understand it. When you think of the genetic variation within sport, there are clearly going to be several types of biological advantage you could imagine. Basketball players will be genetically predisposed to being tall, and so it is interesting that we're focusing in gender more than those other areas. I, I think that is an issue with just how we all feel about gender. What about a male who has a biological advantage? You know what we call him? We call him Usain Bolt. First time, Tyson Gay right alongside Usain Bolt, but here he goes, streaking away. This man, Usain Bolt, is a complete biological freak. There's never been an athlete like him. So he's genetically different. But do we expel him? No. We say he's the greatest athlete ever. So why should a male be treated in that way? But when a female comes along, we say, no, no, she's that normal, we've got to take her out. That's the whole point of sport. The best are genetic freaks. Many people believe Castor has been treated unfairly. Two heavy-hitting Johannesburg lawyers have stepped in, offering their services pro bono. For us, it was the Berlin race. I had my small boy who was shouting, screaming, go for it. And then the next day, there could be stripping of the, of the win, stripping of the medal. Unbelievable. And it was at the dinner table my youngster said, he said, this is wrong, Dad. 
the next morning I said, right, this is wrong. I understand the story, you know, of, of a person who's marginalized. I was born into a family that uh, lived in a back room. Um, it's not even a cottage. It was literally a room the size of this office. And, you know, through hard work, um, through perseverance, life has turned. And that's Custer's story. And that opportunity comes about because of her sticking to her athletics. It comes about because she chose very young to say, you know what, I can follow through with this and I'm going to work hard at it to make sure I'm the world's best. Greg and Benedict believed they would win a case against the IAAF to get Caster reinstated. But it could take years, which, as an athlete, Caster cannot afford. It could also open her private medical records to public scrutiny. Everybody needs a privacy, so, you know, talking about somebody's life, you know, in public like that, it's not good, it's like humiliation. But Castor is not the first to find herself in this position. The IAAF has admitted to eight cases involving gender issues since 2005. Four of these women have already been asked quietly to end their careers. Yet unlike Castor, none has been publicly named. Spaniard Maria Martinez Patino was a promising 60-meter hurdler. After failing a sex test in 1985, she was asked to feign an injury and retire. Maria decided to fight back. When I born, it's a woman. After 22 years uh, before, uh, a woman. Maria was asked not to compete at the Spanish National Games in 1986. She refused and won gold. Her sex test results were leaked to the press. She was stripped of her title and banned from competition. Always, no one spelled the, the, the problem. It's not necessarily front of the, the problem, always. Maria spent the next two years fighting for reinstatement. By the time she won, she was no longer competitive. She failed even to qualify for the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. Such salutary tales are not lost on Caster's legal team. Unlike Maria, Caster has kept her medal and has not been officially banned. A legal challenge cannot be brought until she is. If the lawyer phones me, I'll tell them, okay, if they tell me a certain thing, I'll tell them, okay, if you think this will be right for you, yeah, do it. The lawyers want her out of this limbo. They decide to challenge her suspension. At the moment, you know, our efforts are pointed at trying to ratchet up the pressure so that they make the decision fast. A perfect opportunity arises. A provincial championship meeting is scheduled for March in Stellenbosch. If she's not allowed to run, the lawyers want an official ban, not the usual request to stay away. There's been a lot of toing and froing, and um, some letters being written both to the minister and all stakeholders. And paramount, of course, is Caster's yeah. instructions. She wants to run. She's eager to run. It's about her getting back on the track psychologically, and that's what we've been fighting for. And if she's to run, then it's game on. In the optimistic atmosphere, even Caster's running times are improving. Nothing can stop her now, because those times which I was waiting for, she's doing them nicely and I'm happy about it. 28, 29, that's good. I must work hard to make sure that she run well and showing other athletes that even if you, you are off for some couple of weeks or months, you can come back and then you start right at the beginning and then up to until you reach the fitness that you want. As race day approaches, there's still no sign of an official ban. It's pretty good, you know, going back to competing and do what the athletes do, do my best, and uh, yeah, it's good. I'm quite happy about it.
find a lot of people looking for autographs and those kind of things and it's good yeah it's the day before Caster's return to racing coach has ordered her to rest but she can't resist heading out to the training track Hello? Yeah, she's coming. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm perfect. <laughs> huh? It's Caster's lawyer on the phone. I, 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 no, I don't, don't understand. No. So what did they say? I don't get this. Why they don't want me to work? I noticed that there's something not uh, going right here about uh, Stellenbosch. This thing, I don't understand it at all. Because I cannot wait long. So it's better for me to just take actions. Under pressure from the IAAF, Athletic South Africa has once again ruled that Caster is not allowed to compete. This thing, maybe it needs me to go and tell them straight what I want. It's how things must work. I am not a quit. If I started something, I must finish it. The lawyers seize the moment. If they can establish that Caster's ban is official, it would leave them one last option, legal action. They catch the next plane to Cape Town and head out to Stellenbosch. En route to the stadium, they devise a plan. Coach is to register Caster for the race as if nothing has happened. Ben and myself will be in the background. I think Coach is equipped for this. But obviously if there's any difficulties, he'll come back and then we'll take it to whatever level we have to. But I think this is Coach's terrain. He's in control of it. If we need to step up to the mark, we will. But when they get to Stellenbosch Stadium, they discover their plan has been thwarted. This is by invitation only. Ah, uh -uh. that's right. We just want to register. To register. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, she must run. With our camera asked to leave the room, Coach, Caster, her lawyers and ASA hold a private summit meeting. After a tense couple of hours, the lawyers had their answer. Caster is officially banned. Legal action appears their only option. The team returns to Pretoria, Caster deeply disappointed. I don't give a shit about athletics anymore, so yeah, yeah. So running or not running is the same story, so yeah, for me. If they allowed me to run, yeah, I don't care. So I don't care if someone allowed me to run anymore, whatever. So that's why even now, 
I don't care about running it truly as of now. So I'll just do my physical activities, so the way I've been doing, so about competition or whatever. So I don't care anymore. The South African government is powerless to get Castor's suspension lifted. But to show support, they've given her a grant to build a home for her family in Limpopo. This provides employment for family and friends. It's been one of the high points of the past months. It's pretty good. Mm, this is a passage here, over there. So this will be a kitchen, two bedrooms, and then a bathroom, toilet. Maybe this one will be my room, I don't know. Yeah. You see, yeah, the space is good enough. The suspension may be threatening her financial future, but the family's support is unwavering. They believe the decision will go in Castor's favor. Something that they're talking, I know that she's not true. It's not true. Yeah. I know her. I grew up with her. We did a lot of things together. Yeah, playing together. So, why should I be worried? Caster, however, is less certain about the future. Yeah, I was a champion last year. South African champion, world champion. Now I'm no longer there. Yeah? That's how things work. Because you cannot say, no, I'm a world champion. World champion. Yeah, you was. But <laughs> now, you are no longer a world champion. Castor wants to avoid a court case and asks her lawyers to give it one final try. Castor's explicit instructions were that she would rather we write to the RWF to get them to commit to making a decision by no later than the first week of June. If the RWF say no, then we essentially have no choice but to launch legal proceedings. The lawyers don't think the IAAF will want its sex verification rules tested in court. If it does go to court, it says a huge precedent, an objective legal standard that anybody can say, well, that's the standard, I comply with that standard, so I must run and you've got no basis to tell me otherwise. So the wise thing to do here is for the IAAF to just say, Custer should run. Yes. They've given the IAAF a deadline. Now all they can do is wait. On the 6th of July, 2010, 11 months after Berlin, the 800-meter world champion received the news she'd been waiting for. And first, our breaking news, that news that just came in within the last few moments that the South African athlete, This story broke this afternoon, the world 800-meter champion, Casta Semenya, has been cleared to race again against other women runners. The IAAF stated simply that they had accepted the findings of medical experts and Castor was indeed eligible to compete with immediate effect anywhere in the world. They and ASA gave us no further comment, but it was all that Castor needed. It's good to be back, you know, especially when it comes to competition, because, you know, it's been a long time not competing, so, yeah. It's good, actually. Castor is in Finland preparing for the Lappenranta Games. Though the race is a minor one for the top athletes, for Castor it's a huge event. How are we going to prepare for this competition? Only one week left. Maybe we can't. But we'll be there. Like it or not, we'll be there. The 11 months out of action have taken their toll. She's running 10 seconds off her world championship pace. I feel like the muscles are heavy. I feel like I'm too slow. I cannot do this. You know, I wasn't even enjoying it.
It's finally the day of Caster's return to international competition. This is supposed to be a low-key event, but even as she walks to the track to register, stalked by paparazzi, she knows the world is watching. face the consequences I must go and run it all comes down to the next two minutes anything at all. Despite everything, Caster wins comfortably and is finally back in the game. Oh, it was good, you know, to be back, you know. <laughs> It's not easy to, to wait uh, 11 months, you know, to, for actually for, for, for this result, you know, to come back and run. So, yeah, it was hard, you know. My aim is to win Olympics, actually to win all titles. If I win those things, I will say I have achieved my dream, even to break a world record. That's why I run. It's inspirational to a lot of people to actually say, I know who I am, and I'm going to stand strong in who I am. The challenge will be to see whether any athletes are prepared to run against her. And they have to ask themselves, if I was in Caster's position, would I want people to run against me or not? Caster came close to losing a promising career. And she's not the only athlete being judged according to ambiguous rules of sex verification. Behind the scenes of international athletics, other women are being pushed silently out of sport. If something like this cannot happen for anybody in athletics, be good. <laughs> 